What's up, everyone? This is Fela Grant, and you're watching Brand Night TV. Boys and girls, welcome to the second part of the uh, Brad Night TV episode live from Sasa Su, uh, a club in Prague in the Czech Republic, with no other than Fede Le. Now you have to help me out. I have so, I've heard so many pronunciations of your name. What's the correct well, pronunciation? You, 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 Fede Le Grant, Grant? How do you say that? It, it, it depends on where you're from. So if, if, you would be, if you would be Dutch, but like I am, it would be Fede Le Grand. If you would be French, it would be Fede Le Grand. <laughs> if you would be English speaking, it would be Fetty Legrand. So, how did you come up with the name? It, it's my real name. It's your real name. Yeah, it's my real name. <laughs> so I, I, I actually, you know, when I just started, I I was thinking of a DJ name. I just couldn't think of anything original, so I just kept my own name. So it's, it's my real name. It's in my passport. So Fetty is is a real Dutch prename, like surname, kind of like Fetty. Yeah, yeah. You know, that actually, actually Fetty is. Um, Actually, Fede is a typical. I mean, it's it's actually a family name in my family, but it's a very typical name from uh, all the way up north in Holland. It's just like a certain area where where strange enough, almost all names end with an E. Don't ask me why, but so that's that's where I got it from. So Fede Legrand is a real name. That's funny. I didn't expect that. No, don't worry. <laughs> uh, we just had a chat before the interview about this whole EDM thing going on in America, underground commercial music, etc. Um, one of your first tracks. That, that made you famous actually was uh, Put Your Answer for Detroit, which wasn't meant to be a hit record. But because back in the days, Electro House and EDM wasn't as big as it is today. But still, I heard you play, um, for example, a couple of years ago at the Space Terrace, and even you are considered to be a more commercial DJ and act, you still play some kind of underground tunes. How do you manage the, um, uh, to be right in, in the middle between underground and commercial music without losing credibility in either direction? Um, well, I, 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 I think. First thing is that you know the, uh, underground is actually where 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 I come from. So and more or less, Puchens for the Trade was more or less like a an, an accident, if you like. You know, it was just I was just uh, basically I, I I made the record so like a like a what we call electro now, but uh, because basically I, I didn't have the right samples and I didn't have the right old records to make like disco house. So I I, I tried to do funky stuff, but then with synthesizer stuff. So that's actually how the whole whole record kind of kind of came together and the stuff I did after that as well I, I like to me like stuff like let me think about it or the creeps was more kind of like maybe more indie records or like indie dance in than than commercial dance but you know because there was this whole dance revival especially in, in Europe at the time so that's why all the records got got picked up and I think the other thing that I, that I think is really important for myself is that I uh, that I that I kind of do both sides, you know. I mean, I actually prefer to be in the middle. That's that's where I feel most comfortable. Um, for instance, if if I do sensation or whatever, I'll I'll probably start off more more tech housey and kind of build it up into more what we call EDM now or like more uh, uh, big room stuff. Um, and, and and then again, you know, I, I do I do big festivals where I just play an hour. But then again, I do uh, clubs where I play for six hours. So and I think it's very important to to just for myself to to, to satisfy my own need of, of, of what I want musically to 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 keep interested in both sides. Because, um, you know, like back in the days, like 10 years ago, there was actually the job of the DJ to start a little bit deeper and slower and just build the whole set up. Yeah. Nowadays, uh, I think the gap between commercial music and underground music has never been as big as it is today. And so it's all about credibility in the underground or being a commercial kind of... I mean, a jukebag, jukebox is probably a rude word for it, but you know, but you know, people expect from some certain names, they expect a certain sound. Sure. So um, what would you, what would you uh, tell young DJs? Uh, 
that's to just start DJing and producing to manage the gap between um, playing, being able to play underground tunes and also play commercial tunes without cr losing credibility, credibility all the way. I actually, it's very simple. Just grow some balls. You know, that's that's the whole thing. No, I mean, like, uh, and, and to be really honest, I think I think that yeah, I, you, you know, the, the the thing is. You know, it's, it's, it's. I mean, every 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 scene has its own own hits, and everyone plays hits once in a while. But there's a difference between, um, you know, playing one every hour or playing one every minute. And you know, to be really honest, if if you play another hit record like every minute, it kind of you know it kind of loses the art of DJing because you know every idiot can do that because you don't really you know the whole mixing thing is not that difficult anymore. You can either do it with a laptop if you want or with the new Pioneer CD players. If you really can't DJ, it's still quite easy to at, at least beat match. So you know, and I think in in my personal case, I think it's very important that you drop like you know. You know, whatever the room wants, of course, or, or what's possible in the room, but uh, uh, like three, four, five records that people don't know. And of course, you you know, after a while, you can play that big hit. Sure, that's that. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that at, at, at least. But I think for me, it's important as well because I got a lot of young artists on my label that I really believe in that are actually, I think, absolutely amazing. But if 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 no one has the guts to to play new music out, you know, and everyone's waiting for the other one, okay, is, is this a new hit, you know, then nothing's going to happen and the whole scene will, you know, get stuck in this teeny tiny genre, so I, that's why I think it's very important to, to play out as much new stuff as, as possible. Um, where do you personally see the gap between um, underground music and commercial music, especially nowadays that even underground acts like Ricardo Villalobos, Luciano, Richard Hartens, Van Fate, who are actually underground acts, also play in front of 50,000 people. So, you know, so it's uh, not, not longer really underground, underground. No, but, but, but to be honest, as far as I can remember, they, they've always played big, big crowds. You know, I mean, like when, when, when I went to festivals growing up, you know, like Richie Horton was there as well, uh, 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 Carl Cox, who might not be the coolest underground guy anymore, but, but you know, so uh, uh, Jeff Mills, for instance, was, was very big then. So I, 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 I think the whole techno scene always had like a very loyal loyal crowd it's it's just you know it's it's just a crowd that's maybe less interested in um, Facebook DJ votings you know so so maybe maybe it's not so noticeable that they're actually huge and very big as well but it's it's just a different kind of crowd that that just goes there for the music and doesn't really matter if if their hero is number one or number a thousand you know they just like what he does and I think I think that's I, I think that I, I and I think that's what should matter you know I think that's very important but I if, if, if I'm allowed to say so I'm not saying it's everywhere like that but I think there are Let me say some countries where, where the knowledge about music is not that big. So that's why people need. Okay, he has so many views, or he has so many Facebook friends, or he has who's his number, blah blah blah, on the DJ list. Um, and I think, I think especially in the underground scene, the, the crowd is a little bit more knowledgeable. So they, you know, they what they know why they support their artists and why they like their artists. In, instead of uh, it's for the music and not for whatever else. That's just something that we talked about before about the United States and the whole EDM thing because they don't have the kind of Eurodance background that we have since the 90s. So it takes some time for people to dig a little deeper and find out what sub-genres and stuff there's underneath the surface. So. I, I, I think the cool thing is that it's, it's, fi it's finally starting now there as well. You know, you, you, you see like Samvade, Richie, uh, Loco Dice, you see all these guys coming to the States now as well more and more often and, and, and you know, getting a, a bigger and bigger audience. I mean, I, I think we should be very grateful for for what happened uh, because you know it it, it it the whole explosion just opened up a whole new great market and I have to say I mean the, the energy of the crowd there is, is amazing but it, but now it's time to you know see what what else is going on I mean there's more than than just EDM stuff you know
But enough talking about other artists. Um, let's get back to Fede Legrand. Um, uh, you're not also producing and DJing. You also run your own label, Flamingo Records. Yep. Right? Um, every time before I uh, interview a famous DJ, artist, producer, I make a little uh, poll on the internet, on the Twitter, and my Facebook, and everything, and um, to give the young producers the chance to ask questions uh, that they could never ask you because they never met meet you or have met you. Um, one of the most rated questions is always, how can young producers make themselves been heard by labels and by artists like yourself. What do you pay attention to when you're going through demos, for example? To be really honest, for me it's actually really simple. If, like, make sure you have your sound. I, I don't want to hear you know, a copy of someone that's already out there. I mean, like, for, for instance, uh, tonight uh, I'm, I'm being supported by uh, uh, Jules and Scott Sparks, because I really think they have a very unique sound that I haven't heard before and you know and 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 uh, we're all endorsed to to other Dutch guys for instance I think they're super interesting as well because they have a very specific own sound and I think that's that's what I'm looking for and not someone that you know finds the same preset as as another producer you know that's that I think that, to me that's the main thing and in my case actually do send your promos I mean it's impossible for me to get back to everyone because I, I go you know, I get like 500 promos every week, so it already takes a lot of time just to go through them all. But I do go through them all, and usually when I like something, I put it in my radio show first. So, you know, and that's how I get into contact with guys, because they send me more and everything. So, keep sending your stuff, you know? Like, and if you don't hear anything back, it doesn't mean that no one listens to it. And I think that's in, in most cases. So, um, What do you think is more important when you're producing music? Is it the, um, unique, the uniqueness of a, of a track? Or more how the track sounds in the end of the day because a lot of I have heard a lot of tracks from young producers that are not that skilled and not that experienced when it comes to audio engineering but they have brilliant ideas and they're creative like crazy so what do you think where, where's the right you know the right middle way between creativity and sound what is more important I mean I mean of course it doesn't ha uh, it's important that it doesn't sound completely horrible because you know then 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 it it, it disturbs too much from listening to to what's actually going on so I mean try your best but you know, um, sound-wise, most things can be fixed. You know, I mean, if you know, if 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 you sign your first records, so usually you can get an advance. Or, you know, for, from a label, or from a publisher, or whatever. So you can, you know, make your studio better. So on. you know, that's that's something you can over time, or you can ask help. You know, there are tons of possibilities to to make a sound better. I think it's important, but it's not the most important thing. I'd rather have a good idea and help someone out with the final mix than having a great sounding track which you know doesn't go anywhere dream the para para paradise para para paradise para para paradise every time she closed her eyes What's coming up next from yourself? Like it's uh, it's, um, it's spring, it's almost summer. Uh, where can people see you this year uh, during summertime? Uh, is there any new releases coming up? Uh, what's new from Fede Legrand this year? Um, well, actually, I think I think the more or less the first record of this year was uh, was Raw, and uh, I just did a record called uh, "Long Way from Home" with Sultan and Ned Shepard that I'm actually super super happy about because that for me was kind of. You know, I finally succeeded 100% in, in my personal opinion to do something really fresh again. I thought, I thought it was really cool. I have a record out right now called Rockin' and Rolling that I'm very happy with as well. Uh, and I think the next, uh, I actually don't know what the next track is. But I, I actually, I, I worked a lot because I'll be, I'll be doing an album at the end of the year. So I, I almost have a track like every month. So a, a lot actually.
Yeah. And other than that, it's summer. Um, lots of festivals. Uh, Ibiza, of course, again. Uh, some sensations, of course. Um, that's probably my European summer. And then uh, part of summer will be in America. And I, I, I think I pretty much do every festival there that's worth mentioning pretty much yeah <laughs> i think <laughs> that was not very nice expression <laughs> um if there would be one artist worldwide that you could choose to work with or you always wanted to work with who would that be in the dance scene no no overall overall artists like producer singer songwriter you can also tell me three of them just um I mean, there are actually there. I mean, I have a few producers that I really love to work with. Um, actually, I'm with one of them. I, I just seriously, like five days ago, we decided to do something together, which might be a bit surprising, but it's, it's Michael Calvin because I think sound-wise, he's just amazing. So, you know, I, I, I want to learn from that and I, I want to meet him. Um, I would love to work with Florence and the Machine. I think I, th I think she's absolutely absolutely amazing. Um, I actually really like uh, Janelle Monet, which might be a little bit, you know, but I, I, th I think she's super cool. Um, I, I still have um, uh, Pharrell on my wish list and uh, Justin Timberlake. Actually, Timberland as well, because I, I but that's more from a production point of view. So I, I have just different people that I want to work with for different reasons. I mean, sometimes it's their voice, sometimes it's, it's you know, how they how they are musically, and sometimes it's 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 more on a technical level, so it's, it varies. Uh, last question. Um, if you wouldn't be a DJ and producer and a musician, uh, what do you think would you be now? I, I think definitely something creative. I, I uh, probably something with I don't know, f Photoshop or something like a designer or, or whatever. De definitely something creative with a computer for sure. For sure. Yeah. So thank you very much for your time. Have fun at Prague tonight, and hope to see you somewhere around soon. Thank you very much.